وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحم إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam, today's khutbah insha'Allah is about love for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The arrival of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world was a very significant moment. It marked the end of a 600 year drought. 600 years since the last piece of revelation came down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 600 years since the ascension of Isa alayhi salam. And when you have such a long period where revelation stops, people begin to drift away. They drift away from religion and therefore they drift away from morality. And darkness begins to spread. Darkness as an evil. Evil spreads so much so that imagine in Mecca al Mukarramah, people used to be making tawaf around the Kaaba naked. An evil so unimaginable. Salman al-Farisi was a man who lived in Persia and he lived in this time of evil. So he, went, he realized that he was living in a time of evil. So he's like, I'm going to go and search for some guidance. And he goes from one teacher to another, one mentor to another. And he's trying to find some source of guidance, going on a long journey in search of the truth. And the story is a very long and beautiful story, but we're going to summarize it for the sake of the khutbah. So Salman al-Farisi, he went to one of his teachers and he asked him, he's like, look, I need some sort of guidance. Who can I go to for guidance? So the teacher says to him, he's like, right now, there is no one you can look for for guidance. There's no one that can give you guidance. Wait for the final prophet. And he lays out a description as to where the Prophet sallallahu will live and travel to. So Salman al-Farisi, he begins his journey towards Hijaz, Mecca and Medina, right? in search of this man who claims he's going to be the prophet in the future. On his way, he is captured and enslaved. He's bought as a slave and sold as a slave and bought again until he is made to work on a farm in the city of Al-Madinah for several years. Until one day, 
he hears that someone has come to Medina or is coming to Medina and he claims to be a prophet and he goes by the name of Muhammad. So Salman al-Farisi, he's waiting for this for many, many years. And he's just excited, he can't wait to meet this person, Muhammad. So he immediately gets off work and he goes to his Jewish master. He goes, Master, can I go meet this man, Muhammad? Have you heard of him? Can I go meet him? And the Jewish master slaps and is like, go back to work. This does not concern you. But Salman al-Farisi is eager to meet this man, Muhammad, because he's eager to look for this guidance. So he insists and when he finds an opportunity, he escapes. And he goes to meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by when nowadays Masjid Quba, the first Masjid in Islam, a couple of miles outside the city of Al Medina. And so that he meets the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Salman remembers that his teacher told him that when you meet this person, you're going to look for three signs of prophethood. And if he has all three of them, then you're going to know he's a prophet. These signs are signs of his honor, his character, his nobility, things that you're going to recognize that differentiates him from the rest of mankind. So Salman al-Farisi remembers this and now he starts looking for the signs. He finds the first two signs. Again, we're not going to get too deep. He finds the first two signs and then the third sign is that he has to find the seal of prophethood between the shoulder blades of this man. So he's looking, he's trying to, you know, he's looking over the shoulder of the Prophet he's trying to figure out how can I see this man's seal, especially if he's the messenger of Allah. You know, you can't tell anyone, in no time of this world can you tell anyone, you know, can you pull your shirt down, right? So the messenger of Allah realizes what's going on and he tells the man, he tells Salman al-Farisi, he's like, it's as if, he smiles at him and he says, it's as if you want to see my seal of prophethood. So he lowers his shawl and he exposes the seal of prophethood to Salman al-Farisi and right there and then Salman al-Farisi becomes Muslim and joins Rasulullah sallallahu on a sacred journey of spreading the religion of Islam. Now this is the story of just one man in search of guidance, in search of some sort of lifestyle that promotes some kind of nobility and honor. However, there are so many other people in Medina and outside of Medina that have their own stories when they want to search for the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bilal radiallahu anhu met the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was a slave. And Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't, you know, this, uh, he didn't segregate between him. Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anhu met the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was blind. Anas ibn Malik met the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was a child. Khadija radiallahu anha, she met the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while she was she, while she was a widow. All these people had their own stories. Everyone was significant and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he acted with them in such a polite and noble manner. And just like them, we all have our stories. All of us here have our own stories. But what determines whether we succeed in this life or in, and in the hereafter is whether we choose to follow the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or not. Because sometimes the prize or the gold will be right in front of us and we don't realize it. Take for example Abu Jah, the second worst human being to ever live. You may feel bad for such a person that he be, didn't become Muslim. Now don't get me wrong, this is an evil man. But he had the best human being living right in front of him. The best role model, the best teacher, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, breathing, living, talking in front of him. And he decided not to accept Islam out of arrogance. Or Abu Lahab, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he didn't accept Islam. Or even Abu Talib, another uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he's special to the Messenger of Allah because he was his ally until the last day. And even on the deathbed, he told Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I accept you as the Prophet. But when he was asked to accept Islam, he said, if not out of fear, if not out of fear of what the people will say of me, the Quraysh, what they will say of me, I would have accepted Islam. But today I die on the religion of Abdul Muttalib. And just like that, he died in front of his nephew Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So close, but not everyone makes it to the finish line. Another time, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was invited to dinner by one of the people of al Madina. The man, he just came back from a business transaction and he made a ton of money. So he wants to celebrate by inviting the people of Medina to his house for dinner. One of those people was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they were sitting down and Rasulullah sallallahu is monitoring this person, how he feels about Islam, you know, because the Prophet sallallahu came for one reason, to deliver the religion of Islam, the message of Islam. 
and he's monitoring how this person is reacting to the message of Islam and he sees this guy has some love. So Rasulullah realizes he needs a push so he waits for the right moment to make this person become Muslim. So when the food is pre presented to Rasulullah he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rejects the food. He said, I'm not going to eat until this person becomes Muslim. In a very polite manner. So this man says, okay, fine, I'll become Muslim. He accepts Islam and they enjoy the night thereafter. The next morning, the man goes to his friends or his buddies and he meets them and they say to him, the news is on the street that you know you became Muslim. What's, you know, what's all that about? So he says, yes, I became Muslim. And they said, look, you're going to have to, be, you're going to choose between being our friend or following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can't have both. Either you're with us and you enjoy the luxury of being part of the social clique or the social group, or you follow the religion of Muhammad. And this is an interesting situation because we find out, many of us find ourselves in a very similar position where we have the choice on a daily to either worship Allah Azza wa Jal the way He deserves to be worshipped and to publicize our Iman and our Islam or we've succumbed to the insult and to the ridicule of our friends. And there are encounters every day where we have to choose to be Muslims publicly whether on the train, on the street, whether it's wearing the hijab or growing the beard, whether it's staying away from sin or praying on the street or just representing Islam as a whole, having good manners, good akhlaq, the way you deal with people, the way you present yourself as a Muslim, the reward will make up for it. But you need to sacrifice that in this life. Some friends, they're not going to be good for you. And, we can also, and some of us will sacrifice the entire dunya and the akhirah for the sake of this happiness for some of these friends that don't have an impact on our lives anyways. Let alone will they attend our janazah and even less will they be an ally or a companion for us on the day of judgment when we need that companionship the most. Anyways, so this poor man, uh, some of the scholars say his name is Uqba, he's peer pressured by his friends and they're telling him, look, you need to leave Islam or, or, or follow Muhammad. You, you know, you can't be our friend and his, and his follower. So he says, you know what, alright, I'll leave Islam. But they're like, you can't just leave Islam, you have to prove to us. So he says, all right, what do I have to do? They said, you have to disgrace Muhammad. We don't know how, but you're going to have to do it. So Uqba, he goes to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he just spits in his face. And he says, I disbelieve in Allah and I disbelieve in you, O Muhammad. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, unlike the rest of us, he acted very differently. He reacted in a way that's not known to us. He simply put his head down and shook his head and he's like, man, what did you just do? What kind of mistake did you just make? Do you realize what choice you just made? So Rasulullah he reacted in such a calm manner rather than some of us who might knock that person out, right? But Rasulullah his character was unlike that of every other human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala catches and preserves this conversation in the Quran. But He doesn't preserve the worldly conversation, rather He preserves the conversation that will happen between Allah, His Messenger and the people on the Day of Judgment. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا On the Day of Judgment, that the oppressor, he will come biting his hands away, you know, out of anxiety, he's going to be anxious and fearful and regretful that he took such people as his partners and friends. Woe to me that I didn't maintain my path with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And woe to me that I chose such people to be my friends. Woe to me that I made them a part of my life. Because they misguided me after Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had guided me. Now I want to take this time and pose a question to all of you. Because right now we're in that neutral zone between last Ramadan and the upcoming Ramadan. You know, right after Ramadan, our Iman spikes. And right before Ramadan, we're all getting ready for Ramadan. So right now is that middle ground where our Iman really shows its true colors. So the question is, where are our hearts in the equation of loving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? As Muslims living in America, we have to realize that our hearts are generally disconnected from Islam. That's a fact. 
The fact that we are not bothered to even send peace and blessings, which is the bare minimum ibadah, to send peace and blessings on the Prophet وسلم, on the daily is a problem. The fact that we listen to music so openly, that we curse, that we lie, we cheat, we backbite so openly, then it's not a problem, that's a problem for us as Muslims. Or how about following the example of Rasulullah ﷺ in public? How many of us can say, I represent Islam as a whole when I walk out on the street? How much do we really care about our Islamic values? Does Rasulullah ﷺ mean anything to us? Does knowing his seerah change or affect the way we act in school or outside of school? The answer to these questions are our actions. If you go to the Middle East, you'll find two people arguing in a corner. And a third person will go to him and say, Sallu ala nabi. Just send peace and blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ. And the argument just melts away. Just by remembering Muhammad ﷺ, everyone finds peace and tranquility. Now imagine following his example. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Following his character, learning from his honor and nobility, the person he was Our lives would be completely fixed But what happened to the Ummah today? Because if someone was to be randomly picked in this congregation or any other Muslim congregation And say, okay, you, besides your daily prayers, if you even pray, many of us, we have a hard time praying Besides your daily prayers, how many times you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam How many times you send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day, in the week? We, none of us would be surprised if the answer was a whopping zero. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا We have made in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best of examples. How many of us have found an example for ourselves in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How many times have you and I, have we compared ourselves with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or compared ourselves with his companions, radhwanullahi alayhi how many times have you compared yourself with Abdullah ibn Abbas, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Anas ibn Malik, or Osama ibn Zayd? Do we even know these people? Do we know what kind of a contribution they made to the religion of Islam? These were youth of the Ummah who played the biggest roles of expanding Islam and the Muslim Ummah. You guys are students, have you learned anything from the life of Rasulullah about being a student, about how you respect your teachers, and vice versa, how the teachers respect the students, and so on and so forth. That mutual respect, that mutual love, do we learn anything from the life of Rasulullah Building a bond with the Messenger of Allah needs to be at the top of our priority list. Every day, sit by yourself, or with family, or with friends, whatever makes you comfortable and learn something about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Read about him, listen about him, talk about him. Just make sure you mention him on your day-to-day -day basis. Like a parent who can never forget their child, we as an Ummah don't want to forget Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's the love for him that drives us to continue to live the legacy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's love for him that drives us to be better Muslims and ultimately better human beings. We may deal, the way we deal with family and friends, neighbors, co-workers, Muslims and non-Muslims, it should all be based off of our understanding and our knowledge of how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did things. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to allow us to, guide, to find guidance in our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I say this, I say this, I say Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amma ba'd. We'll end off this khutbah with a question that we should be asking ourselves on the daily. What is our purpose of life in this land and what do we want to accomplish with it? This is a serious question. Is the grand plan in this world, on this earth, to buy a few houses, build a few houses, buy some cars, make some money? And then on the way to the grave, we write a check off to our children and grandchildren and just that's it, we die? Or is the grand plan maybe in addition to that to exceed and to, to succeed in every single worldly aspect to contribute to the legacy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to help people understand the religion of Islam better to better ourselves, to live as better human beings and better Muslims and to better the way we li live our lives because that's what Bilal radiallahu anhu did. He dedicated his life to Islam, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Oh Bilal, I heard your footsteps in Jannah.
That's what Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Az-Zubair ibn Awwam, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, that's what they all did. So Rasulullah sallallahu guaranteed for them Jannah. That's what all the Sahaba did. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. So today's khutbah, brothers and sisters, was made for us to realize where our hearts stand when it comes to loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and even more practicing because to love is, some, is one thing and to practice and to show that love is another thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact made it a benchmark to enter, for entering Jannah that He loves a person an X amount of times and He has mercy on a person X amount, right? And to love Allah, for Allah to love someone is to love Allah. And to love Allah is to love the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Say that if you love the Messenger of Allah, if you love Allah, then follow the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Then Allah will love you. So when we leave the school today, or we leave our homes today, or any other day, to interact with people, Muslim or non-Muslim, to be with other people, Muslim or non-Muslim, family, friends, co-workers. Always keep in mind that no matter how much we like being with such a crowd, that no matter how much we like sticking around and hanging out with this person or that person, that none of them are important enough for us to compromise our faith and our principles. And we learn from the akhlaq of Rasulullah how to deal with these people and how to tell them, look, I cannot compromise my deen, I can't compromise my principles. I have to be respectful, I have to be noble, I have to show honesty in every sense and form. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to find guidance in His Prophet sallallahu we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and keep us steadfast on the deen. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha wa zakiha anta khayru man zakaha anta waliyuha mawlaha. Ibad Allah inna Allah ya'muru bil'adli wal-ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon udhkuru Allah al-azim yadhkurkum wa ashkuruhu yazidkum wa ladhikru Allah akbar wa Allah ya'ala ma tasna'oon wa aqimu as-salam Allah akbar Allah akbar shaman la ilaha illa Allah shaman لكم ولكن رسول الله ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة آئكة ليخرجكم ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما الله يا الله لمن حمده